Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you or a loved one is dealing with a health challenge you'd like help with, we are here for you at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, or if you have questions about ingredients, formulations, or our Truth Skin Health products, which you can find find at truthtreatments.com. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all your favorite longevity products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with your longevity business, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you just want to get your products at the wholesale price, you can do that as well, all for a one-time $25 fee. Go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for more info, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Also like to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com. We've got free shipping for the month of December as a thank you for making 2017 an awesome year for Truth Treatment products. All our Truth Treatments are up at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel made with retinol as well as vitamin C, retinol and vitamin C, your two go-to active ingredients for all things anti-aging. Wonderful for helping reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, both retinol and vitamin C. If you're dealing with acne blemishes, age, age spots, dark spots on the skin, retinol and vitamin C are two powerful anti-aging and skin lightening ingredients. They're nutritional, they're non-toxic, and you can get a huge old dose of vitamin C and retinol in our, and retinol in our Truth 5%, retinol 5% gel. Huge doses of vitamin C in our Truth Transdermal C balm. Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine. And our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oils, silicone, water. Nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, thanks for joining us once again on The Bright Side. We uh, Last we spoke, we were talking about the element bromine, an iodine wannabe or an iodine lookalike. Bromine can be taken in by the thyroid when it's present in abundance or when iodine is not present or when iodine is not present and it's in, found in abundance. Bromine is found in, unfortunately, in, uh, it's found abundantly in nature anyway, but uh, it's also found these days in a lot of industrial products. Bromine, well, bromine is definitely a problematic element, but 
like most of the elements found on the periodic table, there may be some health benefits to bromine. There may be some biological benefits to bromine. It actually might be one of the mighty 90 essential nutrients. The jury's still out, although some researchers believe that bromine is indeed an essential nutrient. We hear about it a lot as a toxin. We hear a lot about it as, a, as being problematic for health, but it turns out that, according to some research, as I say, it might be a mighty 90 essential nutrient. The authors of an article in the journal Biological Trace Element Research state that, quote, bromine may be an essential trace element, unquote. A June 2014 article published in Science Daily and also in the journal Cell stated that bromine is an essential element required for tissue development in all animals from, quote, primitive sea creatures to humans, unquote. The article talks about bromine as being required for building healthy, strong, resilient collagen. It's involved in how collagen takes shape in the body and without bromine and under conditions of bromine deficiency, collagen doesn't form as effectively. According to a 1990 article in the journal, in the Hungarian journal, Acta Agronomica Hungarica, I'm not sure what that means, but uh, it's a Hungarian agricultural journal. Authors state that bromine deficiencies associated with re uh, depressed growth, reduced fertility, and a shortened lifespan in farm animals. And the journal Trace Element Metabolism in Man and Animals reports that insomnia in human patients can be linked to bromine deficiencies. Now, these are all natural sources of bromine that we're talking about here. This research is not, not in necessarily a vindication of the importance of pharmaceutical bromine or industrial bromine. It's about natural food bromine. Bromine is found in nature. In nature, bromine is relatively non-toxic as far as minerals go. It's found in grains. It's found in nuts, seafood. And it's actually, as it turns out, one of the most abundant and ubiquitous of the trace elements that are found in nature. On the other hand, contact with bromine and ingestion of bromine when we're exposed to it in industrial applications in concentrated form, now that's a whole other story. While bromine may be essential and non-toxic when it's found in nature, the same cannot be said for pharmaceutical and industrial bromine. Bromine is used in pesticides as methyl bromide. Strawberries are especially prone to bromine exposure. It's very popular among strawberry fa farmers in Northern California, at least until recently, when it was shown that uh, bromine may be uh, damaging to the ozone layer somewhere in the early 1990s or the mid-1990s. Actually, maybe early 2000s, it was determined that bromine or me uh, methyl bromide as a fumigant or as a pesticide should be used less and less, although it is still used not used as much as it was 20 or 30 years ago because it's, researchers believe that it may be damaging to the ozone layers, to the ozone layer. Bromine is in, uh, found in baked goods as brominated flour. It's, uh, it, it, brominated flour is made with something called potassium bromate, which strengthens dough, toughens gluten in the dough. It's actually called a dough conditioner. It allows bakers to use less yeast. Bromine is found in drugs, asthma inhalers, ulcer medications, sedatives. It's found in plastics, especially in computers. It's found in plastic bottles. It's a flame retardant used in furniture and mattresses and baby toys. It's also used to treat water in hot tubs and swimming pools. And these industrial sources of bromine, unlike natural bromine that's found in grains and nuts and seeds, these industrial sources of bromine can most definitely be a health issue. We said that bromine, which looks like iodine in the body, can mess up hormones of the endocrine system. Endocrine, the endocrine system is, uh, refers to hormones that are floating around in the blood. It turns out that bromine can mess up this endocrine system and mess up hormones of the endocrine system. It's said to be a hormone disruptor, which means that pretty much any cell in the body can be negatively affected by bromine exposure. Bromine is very efficiently absorbed from the intestines into the blood and the thyroid or actually thyroid hormone, can attach itself to bromine as well as it can attach itself to iodine. And this is especially problematic if uh, under conditions of iodine deficiency. This bromine-related iodine problem, this bromine-related uh, thyroid hormone problem, I should say, can lead to functional hypothyroidism that's not caused necessarily by problem with the gland like Hashimoto's thyroid, but is caused by problems with the thyroid hormone. So you, you may have, uh, your thyroid may be functioning perfectly well, but under conditions of excessive bromine exposure, you may be functionally hypothyroid. 
when bromine is present in the body, the body is less likely to take in iodine. This is especially especially problematic if there's not a lot of iodine around. All right, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog stories, uh, blog post news stories on all our websites. Actually, our, our uh, archive pages is at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. But we've got news articles and uh, blog posts at criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can also purchase our Longevity products off all our websites, and you can purchase our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Got free shipping for you in the month of December. Free shipping for all our Truth Treatment products, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Got a couple new products coming out, hopefully the first of the year. So many of you guys have asked about cleansers and and toners. We've got a couple of, we've got a nice cleanser, hopefully a body wash coming out at the beginning of the year. And we'll be uh, talking about that. On the bright side, you can, of course, check out all our truth treatment products and uh, get information about our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Also, our Facebook page, The Truth with Ben, and free shipping for all our truth treatment products for the month of December. Check it out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Got lines open for you. And as always, we'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, 844-236-6010. If we've left you on hold in the past, now's the time to get on board. Tell our call screener that we left you on hold, and we'll get you first up, 844-236-6010. We're talking hormone disruption. We're talking the element bromine specifically. When bromine is present in the body, the body will be less likely to take in iodine. Problem is made worse if you're iodine deficient. I, I'm not, there's really no, nobody really knows what iodine deficiency is specifically, although if you have a full-blown goiter, obviously you're going to be iodine deficient because nobody really knows how much iodine we need. There's no real, even, you know, generally speaking, the RDAs, the recommended daily allowances, are really kind of meaningless when it comes to good health. The RDAs, which is what most of us go by when it comes to determining how much supplementation we're going to have, the RDAs are really based on deficiency diseases. They're not based on good health. They're based on oh, how much you need, how much vitamins and minerals and essential nutrients you need to eliminate or to prevent deficiency diseases. In other words, you may need 100, 125 micrograms of, uh, of iodine to keep you from going into full-blown goiter, but that doesn't tell you how much iodine you need to be maximally healthy. So really, the RDAs are not much of an indicator when it comes to how much nutrition we need to be strong and vital and healthy, and basically, they're meaningless. Best to just use a lot of nutritional supplementation and to use a lot of nutrition with some exceptions. There are some nutrients you can, over, minerals particularly, that you can take too much of. Selenium you can probably take too much of. Zinc you may be able to take too much of. Not, just, not that any of these things are going to be fatal if you take too much of them, but you may go into a condition called hypervitaminosis or you may go into a little bit of mineral, uh, you may end up with some mineral toxicity, but you have to really OD big time on these things. Best to, best to take more, in my humble opinion anyway, best to take a lot more than the RDA for most of these things. Now, if you're being exposed to bromine, you definitely need more iodine. Iodine's RDA, as I say, is 150 micrograms a day, but that is based on goiter. That's based on the amount of iodine that you need to prevent a goiter. It's not, doesn't tell us anything about protection from bromine. Until recently, nobody really even thought about protection from bromine. Chances are pretty good if you're exposed to bromine, which we all are, that you need more iodine. If you're extra exposed to bromine, like you're using a, an asthma inhaler, for example, you probably need even more iodine. Historically, bromine was used as medicine for its calming effects, for its sedative effects. It was one of the first anti-seizure medicines that doctors used back uh, in the beginning, at the beginning or the middle of the 19th century when pharmacology was just getting going, when the age of pharmacology hit us, which is somewhere around the 1840s or 1850s. Pharmacology, by the way, or the pharmaceutical business, by the way, began as the dye business. In Germany, the Germans were the first to really get into drugs. The Germans were the first to get into organic chemistry in general. 
the very first synth the very first organic chemical that was synthesized was uh, synthesized by a German. It was actually urea. That was the first organic compound that was synthesized somewhere around 1920s, I think, 1925 or something like that. And it wasn't very long before the Germans, who were, the, as I say, the first to get going in the chemical, in, in, uh, first in, to really get going when it came to industrial production of chemicals, it wasn't very long before they turned all their dye, uh, dye factories into drug companies, uh, into pharmaceutical factories. And one of the early pharmaceuticals, one of the early substances that was used for pharmaceuticals was bromine. Back then... 19, uh, in the 1820s, doctors, like today, they weren't known for their critical thinking. They weren't really known for their scientific thinking. All doctors knew that seizure disorders were caused by masturbation. That was the thinking. And because bromides and bromine poisons uh, the sex drive, it shuts down the sex drive, medical professionals f figured, well, let's see, if it keeps you from being sexually active, maybe it can get our seizure patients to stop uh, pleasuring themselves and their seizures will go away. Well, of course, that didn't really work. Well, it didn't work because it had anything to do with libido or sex drive. It had to work because it shut the brain down. It's brain toxic. That's why it's a sedative substance. It sedates the brain because it's toxic to the brain. So it shut down brain electrical energy and it had anti-seizure properties. Doctors were convinced it had to do with something to do with sexuality, but as it turned out, it's brain toxic stuff. Later on, 18, uh, in the 1800s, uh, another form of bromine called potassium bromide was used to treat anxiety. It was used to treat mania. Interestingly, like right when the Industrial Revolution started going in the late 1800s, that's when everybody started to get anxiety problems. That's when we started to go into uh, emotional disturbances big time. Probably there was anxiety issues before that, but it got really going. Uh, uh, nervous disorders really got going in the late 1800s and bromine because it's brain toxic had a calming effect on the brain so in addition to being anti-seizure and anti-convulsive it was used as a go-to medication for treating mania and anxiety that is until the 19 uh, until the 20th century when doctors began to realize that bromine toxicity was causing all kinds of adverse reactions people were, were toxing out on this stuff yeah, it was calming people down, but it was also causing depression, appetite suppression, weight loss, even something called bromine delirium. Bromine delirium is similar to alcoholic psychosis, which is where alcoholics talk to pink elephants and leprechauns. That's actually known as Werner-Korsakoff syndrome. Colloquially, it's called, it's called uh, alcoholic psychosis, and bromine delirium is, a, is very similar, caused by excessive exposure to bromine. So by the early 1900s, Bromine was, uh, as a medication anyway, was uh, use as a medication, use as a drug was sur sur severely uh, curtailed. Although, you can still find it in drugs, according to material science news. You can still find it in sedatives and analgesics, antihistamines, drugs for treating pneumonia and cocaine addiction, as well as, as we said earlier, in, uh, in uh, asthma inhalers. It's also used... Uh, are also being explored for use as a treatment for Alzheimer's disease and for cancer and for AIDS. Still, these days, bromine exposure is not necessarily going to come at you from, from drugs as much as it's going to come at you as an industrial chemical used in pools and hot tubs, as a disinfectant, and as a fire retardant, computers, smartphones, carpeting, mattresses, clothing, furniture, flower products. It's used in pasta and, and soda pop. It's actually found in Mountain Dew in a form, uh, form that's known as brominated vegetable oil. When you combine vegetable oil with bromine, you get an emulsifier that allows oils to be put into your soda pop. BVO, sometimes they call it, bromine, brominated vegetable oil. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. On the bright side, pharmacist Ben here. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Eight four four two three six sixty ten. We'll get to your calls here momentarily. We do have lines open for you. Eight four four two three six sixty ten. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, or hypothyroidism, or bromine, or iodine, or you just have a comment or success story you'd like to share, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll continue talking about bromine and iodine, and we'll continue talking about, or we'll, we will talk about fluoride next week as we continue to discussing trace elements and the thyroid and thyroid and adrenal issues on the bright side. 
844-236-6010 is our number from the journal Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology, November 28th, 2017. Diabetes, obesity, behind 800,000 cancers worldwide. Nearly 6% of new cancers diagnosed worldwide were caused by diabetes and excess weight. And that's according to a study published Tuesday. But I'm telling you folks that a vast amount of our cancers are caused by blood sugar. I would say all cancers involve blood sugar issues. I'm not going to, I'm not sure if it's a direct cause, but it could very well be. This is, what we, this is what I mean when I talk about the triangle of disease. There are no health challenges that don't have these three points of disease behind them. And of course, the second point on the triangle of disease is diabetes and blood sugar problems. And you know what? You don't have to be diagnosed as a diabetic to be dealing with messed up blood sugar, blood sugar that's messed up enough to cause heart disease and cancer. In fact, I, I would go as so far as to say there's no such thing as cancer or heart disease that does not involve some element of dysglycemia. Again, you don't have to be diagnosed as a diabetic. Just because a doctor tells you, oh, your blood sugar is fine, you're not a diabetic, doesn't mean that your blood sugar is not uh, affecting your overall health. Sugar is a cancer feeder. Cardiovascular disease is part of something called metabolic syndrome, which is also a sugar problem. Just Google metabolic syndrome. Just Google cancer cells as, uh, as sugar feeders. The fact of the matter is, is we have so much more control over our health than we know if we approach our health challenges at the causal level. If we try to approach our health challenges at the level of the effect, we're not going to be able to do anything. And this, this is more than anything else responsible for the utter failure of the medical model for dealing with chronic long-term degenerative diseases. They're focusing on the effect. They're focusing on the leaves, not the root. Or better, not the soil. Disease begins at the level of the soil. By the time it's a leaf, you can't do anything about it. That's why drugs don't work. That's why doctors will tell you there's no cure. That's why the medical model, we, we spend more money on health care, trillions of dollars on health care, yet 80% of, of our health disaster is based in chronic long-term degenerative diseases that doctors can't do anything about because nobody's working on the soil. The soil of disease is the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex, period. End of story. And what's powerful about this idea is that while the doctor can't do anything to address digestive health or blood sugar health or the health of the adrenal thyroid complex, we can through nutrition, nutritional supplementation, through food, correct diet, through oxygenation and respiration, through relaxing the body, through mental and emotional and, yes, even spiritual strategies. This is where health resides, not in the doctor's office. We've got to get this through our heads. The doctor's this doctor and medical model is not here for us, period, with the exception, of course, of surgical procedures and emergency procedures. There are times you need surgical procedures. Yes, I know. There's times you need pain pills. Yes, I know. But for chronic long-term degenerative diseases, we don't need a middleman, i.e. a metal man, a medical man. Med comes from the word middle. A medicine man, a doctor, is someone who sticks himself in the middle between you and your health. Oh, don't worry about what you, your lifestyle. It has nothing to do. You can eat whatever you want because we're going to take care of your health for you because we talk to the health gods. We're your middlemen. Do whatever you want. Pay us and we'll make you healthy. This is, the, this is what the medical model says. No different than what priests used to tell us in the 14th and 15th and 13th and 11th and centuries in the Dark Ages. Oh, don't worry about God. We can talk to God for you. You just uh, give us uh, one-tenth of your salary and your house when you die. We'll talk to God for you. Make sure we get, you get to heaven. Same idea. Doctors today, are the pre, they're, they're, they've taken over the role of the priests of yore that we, think, uh, that we make fun of. The old superstition, the old superstitious model where the priest talks to God for you. May not be such an old model. That's a whole nother story. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Uh, let me do one more and then we'll get to your phone calls. I love this. Type 2 diabetes has hepatic origins. The hepatic meaning liver origins. Type, type, type 2 diabetes is a liver issue as well as a digestive issue. This is our triangle of disease. Once again, the liver is a digestive organ. And according to uh, this article in, published in uh, the journal Nature Communications, 650 million people who have diabetes 
and are at risk, uh, and many millions more at risk for, uh, for uh, metabolic syndrome, are suffering from issues with their liver, specifically fatty liver. 100 million Americans have fatty liver disease. The liver is a digestive organ. There's also a relationship between the microbiome, the universe of bacteria that live in the gut, and blood sugar. Diabetes, folks, guess what? It's a digestive health challenge. Aside from the fact, obviously, it ha has to do with the foods we eat, it also has to do with how well we process energy at the level of the liver, at the level of the intestine, at the level of the microbiome of the bacteria. Why is this important? Because it means we have so much power over what is arguably the single most important health crisis faced by Americans and citizens around the world by 8 billion people nearly. And it's all, it all has to do with how we eat and how we take care of our intestines and our digestive health. That's why one of the best things you could do, one of the best supplements you could take if you're dealing with blood sugar problems is a good probiotic supplement like your nightly essence. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. Let us go to, oh my goodness, Diane in Nebraska has been holding on for a long time. Good morning, Diane. How you doing? I'm good, Ben. It's a pleasure to speak with you again. Nice to speak to you. How's everything going in Nebraska? Happy holidays, by the way. Thank you. Same to you. Uh, yes, it's going well. We've got uh, a mild winter so far. Yeah. Where are you in? Uh, are you in Omaha? Or are you in a little town? Yeah, we're we're just south of Omaha, about 100 miles. Well, that's kind of you're probably in a little farming town. Uh huh. Nice. Uh, real area. Yeah. Is it like Mayberry? Yep. Yep, yep, maybe RRC. Uh -huh. I love it. I love it. And Nebraska is a super, you know, Nebraska, Nebraska gets a bad rap, but it's a super cool state, and people from Nebraska are really, really sweet and friendly. Like you, well, you got a little bit, you got a little bit of an edge, though, now that I think about it, Diane. You've ripped me a couple times. Anyway, what's going on, girl? I think it's the football team that gives them a bad rap. Is that what it is, the Huskers? Uh, yeah, 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 it's the Huskers. They're, they're in bad shape this day, these days. So. They've been in bad shape for a while, haven't they? Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they've been pulled out of it, so maybe they'll do that again. <laughs> All right, what's, go, what's going on? How, how can we help you, Diane? Um, I've been looking at a product on uh, on the Internet that's uh, for lectin uh, shield. It's, it's okay. called lectin shield. Okay, I've seen those kinds of products. Uh, pardon me? I have seen those kinds of products, lectin oh, lock okay. and lectin blockers. Yeah, the biggest, the biggest uh, nutrient or the biggest... Uh, item in it is uh, in acetyl the glucosamine glucosamine yeah, D, the D glucosamine. I don't know if that means anything. Yeah, yeah. Anything. That's a very good question. That's a good point. I want. We'll talk about that when we come back from our breaks. Okay, Diane, don't go away. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the bright side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Back, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. We're talking to Diane in Nebraska about lectins and glucosamine. So, um, Diane, you there? You yes, I am. Hi, Diane. So yes. do you know what lectins are, first of all? Uh, yes, I've listened to you talk about lectins, so I'm kind of familiar with them. Okay, so basically for the listeners, and just as a, a quick review, uh, lectins are a type of protein. They're found on uh, pretty much all plant cells. Pretty much all cells actually have some, do, some kind of, uh, uh, let, let's just say that they're found mostly in uh, uh, nuts, uh, beans, fruits, vegetables. Most foods, natural foods, will contain these protein lectins, and they basically act as a kind of immune system for the plants. They're a defensive molecule and they stick themselves to uh, sugars. They stick themselves to sugars that are on invaders, invaders of plants, things like bacteria, for example, or, or animals that eat those plants. All of these are made up of cells, and these cells have sugars on the top of them. You, you know, your cells are coated. We always talk about the cell membrane, which is made up of fats, but the cell membrane itself is coated with a layer of sugar. Did you know this, Diane? You got all your cells are wrapped around with the thinnest, it, it, too thin to even, you can't even see it with, you can only need an electron microscope to see how, uh, how thin this layer of sugar is. And these sugars react with the lectins. And this is one of the ways plants defend themselves. They, they stick themselves to the sugars. The problem is, is that we got these same cells with sugars on top of them in our intestine. 
And when lectins mm -hmm. hit those uh, cells that are in our intestine, we can run into all kinds of intestinal problems. And then those complexes, those lectin sugar complexes can enter into the bloodstream and wreak all kinds of health havoc, including mm -hmm. and especially autoimmune disease. Does that make sense how I explain that? The lectins in the yep. plants bind themselves to sugars that are on cells, animal cells, bacterial cells, fungal cells, intestinal cells. And this is where mm -hmm. disaster comes from for many of us. So with glucosamine, you asked about glucosamine in the lectins, right? This is kind of interesting. Why would they put glucosamine in a, in a lectin block or a lectin block or supplement? You know, well, think about it. Let's, yep. let's use our, our, our medical detective hats here. Think, why would glucosamine help prevent against a lectin reaction? This is so cool. When you take glucosamine, the lectins, check this out, okay? When you take glucosamine, the lectins that are in your wheat or that are in your beans or that are in your foods, the foods that you're eating, they will be redirected away from the glucosamine that's on your cells to the glucosamine that you took orally. Glucose means one of those sugars that are, on the, uh, that are coating the cells. So your cells are coated with sugars like glucosamine. The lectin attacks the glucosamine in the cells, but if you take a supplement that has glucosamine in it, it acts like a heat-seeking, like, like one of those, uh, like one of those uh, fake heat-seeking missiles that they use, uh, decoys or, or dummy missiles that they use, and it's redirected away from your cells towards the supplement that you just took. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's kind of yeah. complex. Isn't that cool yeah. how that works? So glucosamine, yeah. glucosamine's in there as a decoy to redirect the lectins away from your intestinal cells to the uh, glucosamine that you took in a supplement. Kind of neat mm -hmm. little strategy. Mm -hmm. I hope I explained that mm -hmm. well. Does that make sense to you? Anything else? Yes. Uh, yes, Ben. Uh, the other ingredient uh, is a, bla a bladder rat. Is ah, bladder rat. Can... Yeah. That, you know what that is? No, I don't. That's your Fucoid Z. Oh. Bladder rack is, the, is brown algae. It's the, uh, or maybe red algae. It's a type of algae uh, that contains fucoidin in it. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's used in, um, in uh, our, um, our, our fucoid Z. And it is incredibly valuable. It also helps in much the same way as the glucosamine. It's got lots of these little sugar complexes that can tie up the lectins. Uh, bladder rack also coats the digestive mm -hmm. tract. It's got a kind of gummy, slimy quality. We always say the gummy, slimy stuff helps coat the digestive tract and speeds up healing and has a protective effect. So it can slime mm -hmm. the digestive tract and it can also slime away lectins. It has a sliming, mm -hmm. kind of a sliming property. You know how, I don't know if you've ever seen algae, mm -hmm. but if you add it to water, it has, it's sort of gummy and gooey and slimy. Uh, that mm -hmm. slimy property helps protect the body from the lectins. All right. All right. There you go. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right. Well, good to uh, talk ben, to you, Diane. Hey, Ben. Yeah? Um, uh, is a healthy start pack, is that a good uh, choice for a, a pregnant mother? Heck yes. It's not a, pr it's not a good choice. It's a must-have. A must-have. Okay. It's a must-have. For, not for just for the pregnant mom, but for the baby. You know, we always talk about nutrition for the baby or for the fetus, but when, the, when, you're, when a mom is carrying a baby, guess who gets the nutrients first, the mom or the baby? The baby um, or the fetus. That means the mom is running, uh, 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 running high risks of nutritional deficiencies as well. So nutritional mm -hmm. supplementation helps both the fetus, the developing fetus, and the mom as well. All moms should be supplementing. Absolutely. How many ESAs, how much ESAs do you think would be good for 12, a pregnant 12 baby? a day, 15 a day. Remember, she's doing them for two. She's taking them for uh -huh. tuna. So 12 to 15 is what I'd be doing. How about iodine? How, how about iodine? You know, there's really no way to know on that, but I would be doing definitely at least the minimum, the 150 microgram minimum. I even 10 okay. times as much probably. There's no real way to know, but I would be doing oh, wow. 10 times as much. Better, better safe than sorry on iodine. It's so darn important for the developing baby's brain. Okay. You know, you never know. Maybe the baby. We know what frank, full-blown iodine deficiency does to baby's brains, the the brain of the developing fetus. But we don't know what just subclinical kind of like just a little bit less iodine. Maybe it makes the brain develop a little bit less effectively so the child is a, a little bit less co uh, cognitively developed. And maybe you don't even notice it, but it's just a little bit. So I, I'd be going with uh, Dr. Brownstein's uh, recommendation, Dr. Guy Abraham's recommendations, which are much higher than the RDA. All right, I'm gonna let you go, Diane. Happy holidays, good to hear from you. All right, take care, Bye. take care, bye-bye. All right, let's go to our friend Elaine in Alaska. Good morning, Elaine. Hey, good morning. How's it How going? Are you doing? I'm doing well. What's going on today? Oh, yeah. You know, I've got a couple questions. I don't know how much time we have left. And I have a little a bit. We've got a couple minutes. Okay. Uh, just a quick comment. I think you had a caller this week about uh, tinnitus or tinnitus. Yes. 
And that's something I've had since 2010 because of a uh, uh, Plaquenil, it seems like, is where it came from. But you also but had an auto, as I am correct me if I'm wrong, you, you had an autoimmune thing going on, don't you? Oh, I have lupus, yeah. That's autoimmune. Yeah, so, that's what I was telling this gentleman, and I want everybody to hear this. Nobody just has lupus. It's not a problem as much as it is a sign of a problem. Lupus grows on the, uh, on the autoimmune disease tree so, uh, so that uh, it's a leaf on the tree. You follow what I'm saying? It's just one leaf. You gotta have blood sugar problems too. You gotta have thyroid problems too. You gotta have menstrual or reproductive issues too, Elaine. I'm not picking on you. I just want you to see how it's a com it's a it, it's a uh, a complex. It's a, a bunch of uh, a, a, uh, a constellation of symptoms that are all part of the same basic breakdown. So tinnitus makes perfect sense because tinnitus is an inflammatory condition, as I was telling uh, our caller. It's not a problem in itself as much as it's an indicator of inflammation systemically in the body, systemic inflammation, which is very common, by the way. Go ahead. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to interrupt you. What were you going to ask me or point out, Elaine? Say about three weeks ago, I just completely cut out all caffeine. Okay. And uh, wow, the tonight yeah. is cut at least in half. It's so much That's better. That's awesome. So, that is so that, awesome, you know, Elaine. I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, caffeine I, is caffeine is you know caffeine gets a bad rap sometimes it does have some benefits especially for learning but it does put a stress on the body and in, if the biological system is already in duress uh, caffeine can put it over push it over the edge so yeah cutting back you don't necessarily even need to go to zero tolerance just cutting it back can be helpful yeah, good 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 call on that Elaine what else um, yeah just um, like I don't know if you can have a conversation sometime about um, thermography versus mammography? There's, no, there's nothing to be said. Thermography is the way to go. Mam mammography is primitive, barbaric. It, it really is a crazy thing to do to breast tissue, to shoot it with radiation. <laughs> Think about it. You're looking for cancer by shooting radiation at the breast. R right. Cancer causing radiation at the breast. This is just this, this craziness with the medical model. Like ablating the heart, like electrocuting the heart, like killing cells, uh, killing good cells to get to cancer cells with chemotherapy. There's just so much ridiculousness, idiocy, absolute craziness, not even craziness, just stupidity in the medical model. And, and mammography is not at the top of the list, but it's, it, it's in the top 10 stupid things that we were supposed to do, uh, that, that we're told we're supposed to do by the medical model. Thermography, on the other hand, is, as I understand it, completely gentle and benign. And it uses heat rather than radiation, thermo meaning yeah. heat, in order to detect things. And it can detect things earlier. As, I have to go back and do my research on this, but as I'm recalling, as I recall, it can detect things earlier than, uh, than uh, mammography. But you're not going to hear that from, uh, from most, uh, most oncologists or, or, or radiation specialists, uh, radiologists. All right, Elaine, thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. We are out of time on the bright side. Apologize if I left you on hold. That's why I get a call in early on the program. But we'll be uh, back at you with another good episode on uh, coming up on Monday. So uh, if you, we left you on hold, tell our call screener. We'll get you first up. Please check out my Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and all the longevity products. We also have free shipping for the month of December. Don't forget, free shipping at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and don't forget about our longevity products at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.